Module 4 is about indirect proofs. We've seen proofs by contradiction, but another type of indirect proof is via contraposition. So that's what we're going to be introducing in this video. Now, proof by contraposition is probably the easiest of all three types of proofs if you're comfortable using a direct proof. So, more or less, the idea behind a proof by contraposition is if you recall, if this is our statement, the statement is equivalent to its contrapositive. So if proving the original statement is difficult directly, we can always convert the statement into its contrapositive and prove that instead. And proving one is the same as proving the other. because they are equivalent. So the first step is going to be to express the statement to be proved as a universal conditional statement. Now this is only going to work if you can express the statement as a universal conditional statement because it's only conditional statements that have contrapositives. So we're saying so for all x in some domain, if p of x is true, then q of x is true. We now want to rewrite the statement as its contrapositive, which again is equivalent. If you recall, the contrapositive is for all x and d, if x makes q false, then x makes p false. And then finally, the third step is to just prove the contrapositive by a direct proof, which we all know how to do at this point. So we're going to start by supposing this. And we're going to try to deduce the second part. Okay, so <clears throat> we're now going to apply this method to a proof. So we want to prove that for all integers n, if n squared is odd, then n is odd. Well, to see the usefulness of a proof by contraposition, I'm going to first try to solve this directly. So to prove something directly, we need to put it in a universal conditional statement form. So this is the statement for all n in the integers if n squared is odd then n is odd okay so we're going to try to prove this directly we're going to start by supposing this first part let's specify here that we're going to try a direct proof. Suppose n is any integer such that n squared is odd. We want to show the second part here. We want to 
to show that n is odd. Well, if we know that n squared is odd, then we can give it a value. Now, notice we cannot do this for n. n, showing n is odd, is what we're trying to do. Right? That's our goal. We cannot start from our goal. We can only start from our starting point, which is our supposition. So if n squared is 2k plus 1 for some integer k, um, so n is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2k plus 1, um, now what? It, this proof is going to be very difficult to solve directly, right? It may be possible if you get into enough nitty-gritty algebra, but what you would have to do is show that this right here is odd. And honestly, I don't know how to do that. That would take some serious thought before I could even make any progress at all. So this is the disadvantage of trying to use a direct proof. Sometimes it doesn't work of always using a direct proof. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes one type of proof is much easier than the uh, another type of proof. So we've got three proof types now in our bag of tools, and you always want to try to select the one, the tool that's best for the problem, the proof type that's best for the problem. Okay, so it didn't work to do this directly. Let's instead try to do a proof by contraposition. So we had before, I'm going to write these up here, the statement was for all integers n, if n squared is odd, then n is odd. And remember, that was the first step in our proof by contraposition. The second step is to write this out as the contrapositive. Okay, so the contrapositive of this is going to be for all n in the integers. If we take the negation of the second part of our statement. If n is not odd, or if n is even, then now we take the negation of the first part of our statement. This is why I made such a big deal about you becoming comfortable converting a statement into its negation, its contrapositive, its converse, its inverse. Okay, so now we're going to do a proof by contradiction, a contraposition. So that was step two. Um, now remember, step three is we're going to try to prove our contrapositive directly, which means I'm going to suppose this first part. Suppose n is any integer such that n is even. That's a little awkward. I'm going to change this. Any even integer. Right? And w our goal is going to be we want to show that the second part is true of our contraposition, contrapositive. Uh, n squared is even. This is going to be so much easier than if we had tried to prove the statement directly. 
Okay, since n is even, what do we know? Well, we know we can give it, uh, we know it equals 2 times some integer. Now, we used k in our, when we were trying to prove it directly, but since we scratched all of that, we can reuse it because it's not being used in this proof anywhere. Okay, so n is even. Let's take a look at n squared. n squared is going to be, I can substitute 2k squared, and this is by substitution. And let's simplify that. That becomes 4k squared. Um, by algebra. And we can pull a 2 out of that. So I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to say let q equals 2k squared. And what do I know about q? I know it's an integer because k is an integer. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next page, but I'm going to start by rewriting, well, I think we can do it all on one page. We're so close. So n squared is going to equal 2q, where q is an integer, which is even by definition. And that's what we were trying to show, right? It's exactly what we were trying to prove in our proof. And which was to be shown. Which means the contrapositive has been proved true. And as we said before, if the contrapositive is true, then the original statement is true. So, I'm really running out of space here. Therefore, the contrapositive Positive is true, therefore the statement, our original statement, is true. Okay, so again, a proof by contraposition is fairly straightforward if you're comfortable with direct proofs, because that's all we've done right here. These are this is just a direct proof. But we did it of the contrapositive. Okay. So I'm going to put up a typed up version. Okay. So you can pause this and Copy it out if you would like. That's the first part. And here's the rest of it. It's just, just what we had done. In the next video, we'll be doing another example of a proof by contraposition.